Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about the most bizarre television program I was ever on. And it's kind of a fun story. Uh, I was asked to be involved in a television program on the Discovery Channel uh, called The Hundred Greatest Americans. And in that gathering of The Hundred Greatest Americans uh, was Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, and Nikolai Tesla. And those were given to me as something to talk about. I put that aside. I wanted to find out more about this because this was some interesting things that were being thrown my way, but I wasn't ready to talk yet. So the thing is, I watched everything that was going on, and I figured out and found out how they canvassed their audience to the questions. And it was basically, this program was part of the whole program that was doing at that time American Idol, which is all telephone calls in to get your winners or whatever it was at the time. And they decided to do history and they wanted to do the 100 greatest Americans. And so they polled their audience. I repeat, their audience. And uh, <laughs> they picked some fascinating people. Now, there were some greats in there, of course, you know, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, Benjamin Franklin, John F. Kennedy, uh, I think uh, also, um, and then, of course, uh, there was a couple of other people, but not of major note politically. You know, James Madison, the father of our Constitution, was nowhere to be found. Most major congressmen or senators uh, over time were not mentioned. Um, also, um, there were uh, a few, I repeat, a few writers. Mark Twain was about the only one uh, when it came to writers. Or there was no poets or anything like that. There wasn't much in the world of art and science and, and, uh, and, and basically philosophy and the like. Nothing like that at all. Um, one thing I will say was it was a, an interesting and eclectic gathering of individuals that were selected by the audience of American Idol picking their favorite historic characters. Now that proves some very fascinating stuff. Of course... Elvis Presley was in there, and Oprah Winfrey, and um, Whoopi Goldberg, and Ellen DeGeneres, and Tom Cruise, and a few other. I think it was actually quite a few actors because the, the people that were part of pop culture at the time um, were on this list. Now, getting back to what I was given. I was given three people that I had to represent. And I was working with the person that was prepping me for this whole thing. And I said, I hate to say this, but we're doing a program called The Hundred Greatest Americans. And of the three people I have on this list, only one of them's American. The person talking to me, obviously, did not understand history at all. This That's all right. <laughs> And so I did a segment on Bell and Edison, talked about Tesla, even though <laughs> Tesla was not American, or oh, nor was Bell. Uh, <laughs> well, they didn't win, but the interesting thing is that as this whole thing worked its way through, we would come back every week as the field narrowed, and it got all the way down to the top 15 and Thomas Edison was there, and I was representing him. And they had figured out what they were going to do when they got to the last batches of people. And that was that the historians or the person representing the historic figure would come running out. Behind them would be bleachers where they would be cheering and cheerleaders as they promoted their historic character. So I was working really hard on this on my 
entrance and I had to find an, an audience and I was finding people say, come with me to the studio in New York and you got to film this stuff. And uh, nonetheless, we got through all of that and playing with it and Edison didn't make it. He was kind of wiped out. He was beaten out by Oprah and Elvis and, and uh, God knows who else was in the top ten. But Benjamin Franklin was there, of course, and Washington, Lincoln. It was, it was the, you know, the hierarchy. But the interesting thing is that Thomas Edison ran out of steam, or electricity, one might say, by the time he reached about 12. And for the top 10, then they did the bleacher routines. So I was saved that indignity. But uh, it would have been fun. I thought about it, but... It's kind of an interesting thing. I've always thought of it as the most bizarre television program I have ever been on. And, you know, many shows you do, there's reruns. I've never seen it again. And there's probably a reason for that. Because it was slightly <laughs> inaccurate and historically uh, irrelevant. <laughs> because, you know, what can I say? It was not the audience to ask about historic figures.